And welcome, everyone, to another edition of Orlando Magic Pod Squad. Dante Marcatelli, Jake Chapman, George Galante, and we are joined by Magic third-year man Franz Wagner. Kind enough to join us here. We're having a terrific season at the time of this taping. The Magic 41-28, and 28, getting ready for Game 3 of their season-long eight-game homestand. And, Franz, I just got to ask you, I, I don't know what the weather is typically like this time of year in Berlin or what it's like in Ann Arbor, but uh, how about the – this weather in city beautiful. Oh my goodness! Right? I mean, how great has this been for you? Oh, it's so great. Um, me and Mo, we talk about it daily. Honestly, how how good the weather is, and we obviously compare it to back home. Um, when we talk to our parents, they're always always super jealous when we're on Facetime. We show them show them how sunny it is out here. What do you like to do? So, what would be the what would be the ideal day? I know we talked to Mo one day as he was driving out to the beach, but what would be your ideal day and on on a, with weather like this? Um, I like the beach, but um, honestly, just sit by the pool uh, and enjoy the weather. Um, and then and the ideal day is I just got a sauna. So the, the new oh. thing is right before I go to sleep, I go hit the sauna um, for 15, 20 minutes. And then I pretty much knock right out after that. So, yeah. Now, don't fall asleep in the sauna now. That's not good for you. <laughs> no, no, no. I won't do that. I won't do that. I'll, I'll make sure not to do that. <laughs> Isn't it nice to be beach ready? I haven't been beach ready in 40 years, right? Isn't it nice to just get <laughs> right? out there and be, and be ready for the beach? That must be nice. Well, Franz, let us know. You got Magic fans that, that are super pumped about this season. I, I know you're excited about what's happening right now. Can you feel the buzz and the electricity in this town right now about what about what's happening here with the Magic? Definitely. I think that's that's a huge part of our excitement as a group, too, that we can feel that. And, um, you know, when you're out, out just walking around or something like that, more and more people um, recognize that. Just just thank you for the efforts and stuff like that. I think that's that's a super cool part of it. And um, obviously, we want to make sure we, we keep that going and keep growing as a team and um, yeah, do that for the next couple of years. You actually stole my question because I was going to ask you, have you been noticing when you're out, do do more people, are they noticing you now? Or are they, I, I don't know what it was like before. I don't know what it was like your rookie year or even your second year. Like, are, are you walking around town and everybody goes, holy crap, I think that's Franz Wagner. Like, are you getting some of that? <laughs> A little bit. It's not, it's honestly not too bad, um, which uh i'm a, I'm a little happy about honestly i, I mm -hmm. like to move around and just just be a normal yeah. person too but um i think now now it's more like people are so excited to come up and say hey you guys are playing so great um love what you guys are doing i think that part is obviously reassuring and um yeah keeps you motivated i would say but is this the most fun you've ever had playing basketball Ooh. um in the NBA, I know last obviously. summer. I know last summer. I know last summer. Yeah, it was very fun. Exactly. I know last summer was very um, fun. But yeah, I the think. I anyways. think. Yeah, I think. I think it's a similar vibe though that we're that we're creating here, and I think it's um, it's a little harder to do in a long season like we are having. Um, you know, to have a group stay connected like that, and everybody is totally locked in on the team. Um, yeah, but the national team, like I said, I think there's a lot of parallels that that I would draw in terms of the togetherness and um, roles being defined and everybody um, really growing together as a group. I think um, that's what's most fun, I think, about our group, that we're so young and that we kind of grew as, as a group together. And um, yeah, now we're kind of reaping the benefits of that, I think. Um, and I think that's, I think to me, that's the coolest part, having uh, been with these guys and been through tough times and with these guys as well. And um, like I said, I think now we're enjoying um you know kind of the end of that and um hopefully we can we can finish this season strong amen to that yeah I, franz i'm watching the Cavs and heat i could care less about either of those two teams and i'm watching those games and i'm watching the the pacers and the bull i mean i'm watching them all are you getting caught up and i know you don't look past your opponent i, I know you're not looking ahead by any means but are you watching to see what the other teams do because it affects you in the standings for sure but more so um I would say watching uh, in terms of like playoff preparation and um, really getting to know these teams, um, obviously that, that we're competing with and that we're in the playoff race with. And um, I think the biggest thing is what you said, though, that, you know, we we're in, a, we're in a situation where we can control our own destiny. And I think that's a that's a super, super cool thing for us as a young group. And 
um, how we do that is just stay focused on us. And um, but obviously, I think everybody looks at the standings every once in a while. And um, no, I think if we keep doing our job like we have been, I think we have a good shot. Um, you know, getting a good playoff spot. How have you guys been able to do that, Franz? To just focus on the on the now. I think you guys are doing a really good job of not, like you said, not getting too far ahead and not looking at other opponents. Like you're really, you guys are really focused on, okay, tomorrow night we play New Orleans and that's what we're focused on and that's all we're doing and we're not looking at anything else. How hard has it been to to block out, you know, all of the other stuff, which which comes with with success, all the the people and the the requests and this and that. How, how have you guys been able to focus on that? I think it starts with Coach Mosley, honestly. I think that's a huge emphasis in most of his, his talks and pregame speeches and, and stuff like that. And I think that is it's a credit to everybody on the team, just individually locking in and knowing what the what the task at hand and was, what the goal is. So um, I think for us to stay focused, everybody needs that same approach. Um, and at the same time, I think it's cool that we're, that we're still having fun with it and, and using these games to get better. And also learn from it. You know, I think the New York game, the Indiana game uh, were big learning lessons for us. And I think it's uh, it's a big credit to the team that, that we learn from those games and get better and, uh, you know, not overlook that or think it's not important or anything like that. Um, but I think everybody's aware that, you know, 13 games or something like that left. So um, we want to make those count. I wanted to ask you something similar about you specifically. I was listening to an old pod with you, with Duncan Robinson. I think it was after your rookie year. And he talked about how sometimes in game you want to clear your head, like you got almost too much going on and you're, and you're thinking about maybe the last play and that is that something. And I, and I think obviously you probably improved in that regard, just based on uh, the way you've improved performance wise in, in three seasons. Now, is that something that can only be fixed with reps and, and with time and experience, or is that something that you focus on kind of your mental approach to the game as the season wears on? Yeah, I think, I think it's one of those things, um, you know, it doesn't always get easier, the mental side of it. You know, obviously you, you want to get better and strive to do that. But um, as you get older, your expectations get higher and stuff like that. And I think, um, you know, the, the game and inside of your head is sometimes the toughest part. And um, I think I think that's a huge part of being an NBA player or being just in those high pressure, pressure moments that I think everybody kind of has to figure that out for themselves and, um, obviously, there's resources that, that, that we have with the team and people you can talk to and stuff like that. But um, I know for me, sometimes it's good to get away from the game, um, you know, do, do something that's not related to it. And so then I can come back and, and really focus on it. And then there's different stuff in the game, just like taking deep breaths or um, meditating like before game, stuff like that. I think um, that I like to do. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think everybody kind of has to figure that out their own way. Um, but I think it's it's good to acknowledge that that's a that's a huge part of playing basketball at a high level and doing that consistently over a long time. So um, I think that's that's something maybe that's not obvious, obviously it's not as easy to see as you know guys warming up before the game or stretching and the obvious body recovery stuff. I think the the mental side of the sport is uh, yeah just as much much a thing. It's great. We're hearing so much more about that uh, here. But Jalen's been outspoken about that as well. Uh, how much he's he's benefited from that. You know, I, you, when you watch the way you play and the way you finish, you you pick up the basketball. You're in the paint. You're making your move. Somebody goes right. You go left. They go left. You go right. You have an ability <laughs> to get around them. You can finish. You you can see the defender in front of you, the one that's coming. You're able to finish. How does one? practice that you, you know when you put in all this time and all this work and you have such incredible footwork and you're able to finish you know, falling away flipping it up a high off the glass how do you possibly practice all of that Franz? well obviously i didn't like i didn't do that stuff just the first time i picked up a basketball i think right right i think the biggest thing is having having the basics right and um doing those uh, being able to do those just um, you know, kind of in your sleep and having those habits, right? And then nowadays, um, you know, we do a lot of random stuff where a coach throws me a ball and, like, in the last second, he gives me a pointer of how I should finish, if it's high, if it's with the left hand, off two feet. Um, so different stuff like that to kind of simulate what happens in the game where you adjust in the last second. Um, so I would say we, we do a lot of 
a lot of those kind of awkward finishes maybe that, that um, I sometimes do in the game. Um, but I, honestly, a big part of my game is also focusing on, um, you know, those moments where it's maybe good to go through a defender. Um, I think it's it's cool to, to play with someone like Paolo who, um, you know, has that down in, in the second year already, you know, getting to the free throw line, finding contact to create angles and stuff like that. Um, so that's that's how I look at it. Um, I think those those finishes are super cool, but sometimes the best thing is to create a better angle by um, not just going around people, by going going through the defender. Yeah, good point. So when you are, are you watching a lot of film to 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 figure out different ways that you can finish and get to the rim? Because obviously, if you you know you're at eighty five, eighty six percent free throw shooter, so it would benefit you to get to the line as much as possible, right? For sure. Um, yeah, that's that's a huge. Uh, point of emphasis in my workouts uh, when I'm watching film with coaches or by myself um, or when I'm just watching a random game at night um, you know those those plays kind of tend to stick in my head a little bit more where I see something that I talked about uh, with the coaches um, that day so yeah that's definitely something I try to focus on and um, it's not it's not a natural thing for me so it's it takes a little bit to, to implement that in my game and get better at it um, but I think that that's part of it. It's part of getting better. And, uh, I enjoy those, those challenges, honestly. Does, does a coach come to you at any point and say, Hey, listen, I saw so-and-so do this. Can let's try this. And then you, you, you try to, to, to add a move into, into your, uh, your repertoire a little bit. Yeah, that can happen. The other days, uh, a coach, uh, coach one T sent me a clip of Brandon Ingram, um, you know, finding contact as he, as he's going to the basket. So, um, yeah, it can it can be any type of situation. Maybe uh, preparing for a scout, they they see a clip and they send it to me or stuff like that. Um, you know, we we got a great coaching staff that um, you know is very aware of of what the players are wanting to get better at and what they need to get better at. And I think that's that's a huge part of of, of our program. But sometimes, like your brother says, you just got to bang your head through the wall, right? Uh, <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> That's the most no thing ever. Yeah. Oh, uh, exactly. it's my favorite. I think it's my favorite. What, what is it? How gratifying has it been for you to watch him this year kind of harness that energy, right? For for those of us who have watched every game that he's played in a Magic uniform, we know how important he is bringing the juice. I call him on the radio broadcast the juice bringer, and and, and the nickname admittedly needs work. Um, but, but yeah, you might but, want to workshop. Yeah, that yeah, that one yeah, sucks. Yeah. By the way, it's, I mean, bringer. it's not that bad. I, he brings the juice. I don't know how else to describe the match. Um, it but be shorter, first of all, but it's got to be. It, it has to have been fun, Franz, um, and and gratifying and and rewarding to watch your brother kind of thread that needle where he he's still himself. He's still being um the bringer of the juice and bringing that energy but but he's able to sort of scale it back at times um and not hurt the team it's uh it, it's a fine line to walk at times but he's he's nailing it this year isn't he man that's a huge compliment i would say uh, i think that's uh awesome that for somebody that watches every game that says that because i know it's a lot uh it's something that he focuses on a lot and um you know, he puts a lot of work in and like you said it's it's not easy to do um, you know, to, to bring those intangibles every game and, and, and bring, like you said, the juice um, every game um, without um, maybe going a little bit, a little bit too far. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm super proud just as a, as a brother seeing his development and the way he's uh, carved himself, you know, a role on, on a really good NBA team. Um, looking at how his career went, he, um, you know, definitely wasn't dealt the best cards. So I think that's that's really cool for him. Um, you know, the, the path that he's taken and continues to take. And uh, obviously, yeah, it's it's super cool to see that up close. What did he work on the most? I mean, he, for most of the year, he's top ten in field goal percentage, top five in two point percentage. He's he's top ten in points per game off cuts. He has figured out how to get open, right, and figure out the that's passing a stat. Lines. That's a stat, and he can't, and he's able to like finish. That. So the Magic are one of the top cutting teams, and the guy we're talking to is is right there at the top as well. But um, but as far, he's figured out passing lanes, he's figured out how to get open, and he's finishing this year. Right? Which, what what are some of yeah. the things that he worked on to put himself in this position? I think I think if I, if we would ask Mo, I think he would say simplify this game a little bit. I think he 
uh, knows exactly what he's good at, what he's really good at, and he tries to do that as many times. Sorry, someone's calling. Um, he tries to do that as many times as he can um, throughout the game. So I think, I think whether it's cutting, I think he's always been a smart player, but um, you know, I think he, he has these. He simplified his game in terms of when he gets it in a pick and roll, he knows exactly what he's looking at, what the what his reads are. Um, Obviously, I think it also really helps, um, you know, playing with someone like Joe Ingles, where you know you're going to get the ball if you're open. Um, so I think that I think their chemistry, especially in that second unit, um, no, I think has really helped them. And um, Mo is just a, a smart player that knows where to be at, at what time, and um, yeah, I think a huge part of of our offense and um, of our team. Joe Ingles, have you ever seen a player be so productive that that doesn't bend at the waist? Have you ever seen have you, <laughs> have you have you ever seen somebody that efficient? It's remarkable, right? Not blazing speed, nah, you say, nah. but he's but he's so good out there. He is. I think <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's really cool for obviously us young players to see how you can manipulate the game and um, have a huge input on the game without necessarily being the strongest or fastest sure. uh, or most athletic out there. And, um, you know, those, those are skills that are super hard to learn, um, the stuff that he does every day. And um, so it's cool to see that. And uh, like I said, it's very really hard to, to implement that in your own game and, and, and learning from it. Um, it's definitely it's definitely really cool. Have you all seen the video, the Jumpin' Joe videos, by the way, when he, when he had a fast break and the entire bench was begging him to dunk uh, it? And he... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the one. That was the one moment. That was the one. I don't know if he... we're going to get a better chance, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think we are. I think, I think that was like Haley's comment. I'm not sure you're going to see that one again. Uh, all these and it was post-All-Star so... break. Yes. He should have been So he should have so had fresh legs. Be... Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> no so. We'll there's see. No that doubt. was his chance. There's no doubt. But there's all these chance. videos of him in Australia when he used to dunk on people all the time. It was amazing. It was, you got we got to find those. It's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, well, speaking of fresh legs, Franz, let, take us back to January. You, you had the ankle injury, right, and that puts you out for eight or nine games. We've talked privately, Dante, myself, Jake, that when you came back, it seemed like because you had played all summer, I mean, you really didn't have a break, right. For two straight seasons because you're playing with Germany and then the, and then the, you're playing basically all 82 games for the magic. And then you're going right back to team Germany again. And then, cause we know one thing about you, if you're healthy, you're going to play. And so you've had two straight years and then you had the ankle injury where you missed nine games. We felt that when you came back, like maybe that was a little bit of a blessing in disguise because you even though you were hurt and you had to rehab maybe that was a little bit of a break for you did you feel that at all or were you just chomping at the bit to get back and and the heck with this injury I got to get back on the court yeah I think I think that was one thing that I, I mean one train of thought that I had to stay positive as I was injured um you know you always try to obviously make the most out of the situation and I think I think there's definitely some truth to that um at the same time though I think there's also a rhythm that you get when you're, when you're in season and, um, you know, when you're injured, you obviously kind of lose that. Um, and it takes a little bit to get that back. So, um, but yeah, I think there's, there's definitely some truth to that. And, um, more so than anything though, I was just, just happy to get back out there and luckily it wasn't, wasn't too bad of an injury. Is that the main thing though, Franz? I mean, you had an ankle and you missed eight games. Otherwise, we're talking about the games at the end of the year that, that, that mm -hmm. when the whole team sat, right? 80, 79 games. Paulo's the same way. He sprained an ankle last year and he's played just about every game through two seasons. And in today's day and age, we don't want to get all into it, but um, it's rare to have guys that play. Not, yeah, I pulled the numbers yesterday. You've been available 94.3% of the time uh, in the games you've been in a Magic uniform. Is it is it about losing? Because I know there's nights and, and and days when you wake up and you go, man, this is you know the, the hammy's bugging me or the calf is really sore. Is it a matter of you just want to play because you don't want to lose your rhythm? Is it is it just something that you've always just been programmed that way? If I'm good to go, if I can stand up, I'm going to go play this game. What's that mentality about? Um, yeah, to me, it's like. I would I would hate to like look back and then be like oh I could have helped the team but like you no know, I I would hate to have that like regret thought a little, little bit after the game 
when, when I, if I if I wouldn't have played. So um, if I could feel confident that I'm not going to hurt myself or um, that I can help the team, um, then you know I don't see no reason why not to play. I love playing. Uh, I love being out there with my teammates. And I think there is there is uh, you know I think what I just said with the rhythm, like there is something to that when you when you don't play for a couple of days. You kind of lose that a little bit, and it might take a couple of minutes in the next game. So, um, I think I think that can be a little bit more of that. But um, I think it's also just cool to look back and be able to say, you know, I, I fought through those moments, and um, I think guys guys take pride in that to to be able to play in most games. Yeah. No, there's there's no question about it. You know, so you and Paulo Bancaro, it's only taken a year plus for you guys to 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 be a lethal one two combo. You would be the second pair of teammates in Magic history to average twenty points per game, right? The others are Shaq and Penny. This would be the second time in in Magic history. Now you can throw the ball to him without even looking. You you know so well where it, where he's going to be at, right? That was phenomenal last night, by the way. He says every time he gets stuck, <laughs> he can bank on you cutting to the basket at the right time. How, just how about that? Uh, that that well, that one two punch that that you've that you guys have worked on together. Yeah, I think um, I think we're just both uh, I think smart players that, that love to play with their teammates, and um, I think we're similar in our approach to the game. That we're, that we're very focused, but but still very confident. And I think um, I think just in, in that sense, we're we're very similar in how we play. Um, and then I just got to say, it's, it's pretty easy playing with someone like Paolo, um, you know, that, that draws so much attention and um, at the same time wants to play for his teammates. So um, I think that's it's super impressive at his age, what he's doing. And, um, you know, I, I try to learn as much from him as I can and, um, you know, just make the most out, out of the opportunity that I got. I think that's the that's the best way I can put it. And, um, you know, I'm... Uh, I think we're both well aware that, that we're in a in a situation, um, you know, where we're really lucky, where we have uh, um, you know teammates that, that are giving us a lot of responsibility and trusting us in, in a lot of ways. And I think both of us just just want to pay that back. Who keeps right. you on your toes the most, Franz? Is it Cole playing with one shoe? Is it Jalen taking the three and turning around? He doesn't even have to see it go in. But I saw that. That happened right in front of me, and I had no idea he didn't but, watch Me that too. Thing. I was going to say the same thing. I watched it, and I just thought, well, that's a big shot. We got this run yeah. going. I, I didn't notice it until after the game that he <laughs> that he turned around. Like see, that. I got that up on four. You got I, that. I saw the whole thing. So there you go. <laughs> that's the benefit. See? Benefit. It pays to, see to be up that high, Jay. You can see that. And that's another juice bringer, right? Bringer of the juice and Jalen <laughs> Suggs for sure. But those, those two sure. guys – they, they got to be so much fun to play with, and they each have different elements, but they, they, they certainly can both keep you on your toes for sure. They're excitable players to watch. For sure. Now, there's there's something every night that, um, you know, I didn't expect or, or I've never seen before. And, um, yeah, just for that, I feel like we, we should, you know, maybe, maybe be a little bit more on TV than we have been, but um, maybe we get to see that in the future. But I think I think we have a fun group. Um and those two guys, for sure, they they keep you on your toes. Um, and uh, I think it's I think it's a little bit of crazy is is good for our team. Yes, and for thank team. you. And I think we I think we definitely have that. Oh, we definitely have a little bit of crazy. There's no doubt about that. that <laughs> you're also sure. going to get all the, you're also going to get all the attention you want if you know if this thing keeps going in the right direction and and the playoffs are exactly. there. Exactly. Going to get all the all the spotlight that you want. So. I'm not I, I'm not going to ask you to go back and, and talk about the world championships because I know you love to do that. I, I would like you to look forward yes. uh, to the Olympics because that's going to be something that you and your brother are going to, I would assume, be chomping at the bit to go do that this summer. The groups just came out yesterday where I saw that Germany was with, let's see, France, Japan and Latvia. Right. So. Are you guys, I mean, that the Olympics has to be a, a, a once in a lifetime dream of you guys, right? Oh, for sure. Um, I know Mo, Mo was able to play in the last one, but right. it was during COVID. So I know he's very excited um, to have his first, I guess, real Olympic experience. And for me, the same. I think uh, not just the basketball part of it, but um, just being part of that, um, you know, obviously super historic event and be able to see the other sports too and just catch that whole vibe. I think that's, that's what I'm really excited for. And, um, 
it does, it does like it doesn't happen every every time for Germany to to be a part of that um, with the basketball team. So um, we're really excited to to go uh, you know meet again as a team. We had we had an amazing time the last two years, and hopefully we can build on that. Um, but yeah, just just being a part of that is is definitely something that um, you know it's not a given um, for us in Germany. So I'm I'm gonna enjoy every second of it. I'd imagine that you have a, another group thread with with your German uh, national team members. Was did there was there any chatter after the group came out yesterday about what do we think about this? What do we think um, about France? What anything or does it just you don't really talk about it until you guys are all back together? I, I haven't talked to them. I know the the Latvia. I think Latvia still has to qualify. If I'm not uh, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so we don't know exactly the fourth team. Um, but we know obviously France is going to be really tough to play and it's in France. So, uh, that should be extra fun. And then we just played Japan last summer too. And, um, wasn't an easy game at all. Um, no, they, they, they play very fast and, um, a little unorthodox. So, um, I remember we had, we had a, sometimes a hard time guarding them. So, um, but yeah, I'm, like I said, it's, for me right now, it's uh, I haven't really paid too much attention to the group or anything like that, but um, I know I'm, I'm going to be excited and, and ready to go hopefully in the summer. Does Dennis bring something extra when he plays you guys? Because he, and this goes <laughs> back before, this goes back before you and Mo, but he's a, I believe, career 34% three-point shooter. And then against the Orlando Magic, he's a 40% career three-point <laughs> shooter. Did a good job last time, but it always feels like, is there, are, do you guys have fun when you're out there with Dennis? I'm sure you do. For sure, we do. Um, Dennis is, uh, you know, one of the best competitors I've, I've ever played with. So, um, you know, he, he'll let you hear about it um, in the <laughs> game too. Um, but, yeah, it's, I mean, obviously Dennis is, is someone I looked up to as, as a young German player. And now um, playing together on the, on the national team and playing, playing against each other in the NBA is, is really cool um, for me. And, um, yeah, we, we definitely have fun with it uh, during the games. Listen, I know you enjoyed the heck out of your Michigan Wolverines winning a national championship uh, in football. It's been a heck of a season, and and the, the basketball team has had so much success, and I know it's kind of a shock to everybody, but uh, Juwan Howard, uh, you know, obviously meant so much to you. You got to play for him, and uh, we had him here for a year in Orlando. What 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 kind of guy is Juwan? And I, I know a guy like that will, will land on his feet in, in no time. He, he did great things with that Michigan program. For sure. Um yeah, obviously, it's it's uh, never want to see that happen, especially someone like Juwan. Um, no, I think it's it was just two years for me in Michigan, but a super impactful experience. And obviously, Juwan had had a major impact on me. Um, still, a lot of the sayings that um, you know that he always used they they still you know really hit home with me today, and um, you know had, had a huge impact. Like I said, even even on my career in the NBA now. And um, I think the kind of guy that he is, I think everybody that knows Juwan is um, at first like taken back by how nice he is and um, how easy it is to talk to him, even though he's Juwan Howard and, you know, he has the resume that he has. He, he has a way of um, really giving you the feeling that, that he cares about you as a person. And obviously he did that with, with his players, with, with any one of his players. So, um you no, know, I'm I'm always really happy when when I get to see him and um yeah, great dude, great dude. I think uh great coach, but uh for sure an even even better person. All right, last thing, and I, I don't know if we should leave this in Jake's hands with the bringer of the juice, but we've got a nickname for Mo <laughs> Bogner. So should we we're trying to find a nickname for Franz. You've got Franz Boogie, right? That started at Michigan. Do you like that? Is that the yeah. nickname you prefer? Is it that's the one you want to go with, Franz Boogie? I, I don't mind that one. Um I think I think that's the one that stuck the most uh, yeah. for now. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely definitely not opposed to it. Yeah, we've heard the What's Berlin Mo's Baller, nickname? right? The Berlin Baller's been a good one, right? That I think that's that's pretty. Yeah, I one floating around, not as much. Yeah, it's yeah, like, he's not, superhero. He's not liking you know? that one. He's not liking he's like, that. Fine, one. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. just like it's just like there's there's more Berlin Ballers. You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if people will know right away that that's me. So. Um, Dante saying um, you're the Berlin baller, the Berlin. Are, I, the Berlin. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I didn't start the way. I'm just I asked, ones that I've seen. I'm just looking. I'm. I always curious which one because it doesn't stick if the person doesn't like it. 
<laughs> you got to like it first. Right. And Boogie's no, I, good, I like right? Franz Boogie. You, you, yeah, Boogie, Boogie fits. I emailed Chris Hunter just to see exactly where Boogie came from. And it's 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 yeah. where we it's where we all think it came from. You're super. He said he was super smooth and crafty out there on the court, almost like he was dancing. Hence the word boogie. I think it's perfect. <laughs> it makes it makes perfect. There sense. you go. See. All right. Well, that, yeah. No. That... Chris definitely came up with that. It was just one day, just randomly. Um, but it's cool when you get a nickname. You know, that's when you that's when you really feel a part of uh, of the group, and everybody calls you that. Um, it's, a, it's a cool feeling. So I like that one. And we're glad to see you back on Twitter. I, I think fans were excited. They, they, it was your first tweet in two years last night. That was exciting. <laughs> yes, did you sir, drop one yes, last sir. night? I didn't see it. Yeah, what, yeah, what, I did. What brought you to Twitter last night? I didn't even see it. It was, uh, it was for Top Shot. Um, you know, trying to get some more, um, you know, people on Top Shot, and um, okay, I'm on Top Shot myself. So, um, you try to get your lob. I've, I've, Exactly. I, well, last night's dunk, I think I reposted, and um, yeah, I hope I hope that one lands on top shot. Maybe maybe gets a gets a nice moment. Okay. All right. Absolutely. We'll be following the progress, Franz. This is great. Uh, we All really right, appreciate you taking the time to join us. It's electric in this town, and we can't wait to see what lies ahead. Thirteen games left, and you've clinched at least the play in. But I, I know that's not the goal. That's the first step. But you got more work to do. And best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys.